Hola friends, manga and manwas are one of the best sources of entertainment. No doubt there are some really popular titles which are worth visiting again and again. Trying to come up with a manga where the main character is rootless and twisted can be a difficult task. During my search for this kind of thing, I discovered most people who want one don't know how to go about finding it. So, they rely on blogs and posts, so today, so today on We Love Anime, we will be discussing some of the villains who are ruthless, and of course they're the MCs, so duh, in the mangas. Subscribe and also like, share with your friends. <laughs> Number 10, we have Incompetent Willen. Basically, I really like how everything about the MC is going on for him. The high school student, Dong Jin Kim, seems like a typical moody teenager, but underneath it all, he's a powerful psychic villain who aims to destroy humanity. But there's a catch. Every time he uses his powers to kill, he is thrown back in time. Trapped in his time loop, Don Jin tries to narrow down the culprit by doing the one thing he knows, killing those around him. Will he be able to escape from the time loop and achieve his goal as a villain? Honestly, the manga has a very fun premise. It's very good at keeping the readers guessing. For the first few chapters, it is dubious whether the main character even has superpowers. The plot is pretty cool. You gotta give it a try. It's, it's worth a shot. Number 9. Villain Initialization. In one word, marvelous. It will be going to be a great manga in the future because the way the story unfolds is unremarkable. Wait, unremarkable? Haha! <laughs> well, you gotta go negative when it's villains. You gotta say the worst or, you know, the, the least or unremarkable. But in this case, remarkable. Really good story in my opinion. My only big problem is that it starts really boring and slow. However, the pacing picks up as it starts going on and the story gets better. As for the art, it's rough and scribbly at times, but overall the style for it fits the mood and feel of the story, so I'm guessing it was intentional. Artists aren't in particular good at mood coloring and conveying the movement. The villain, Ling Chin, has a history of hate and violence with the hero, Ye Zimu. Out of nowhere, a reset triggered Ling Chen to return to when he was 17 years old. He had the chance to stop the hero in his path before Ye Zemo grows to become his worst enemy. Number 8. Reverse Villain It's one of those mangas where the MC is really ruthless. Jung Wu is stuck in a reincarnation cycle along with his nemesis, Shin Ryong. Ever since he was little, he had a dream. He wanted to become strong enough to conquer Murin. However, things did not always go the way he planned. Shin Ryong defeated him on every occasion. At this point, Ha Jung Wu had been reincarnated about like 5 times and was defeated yet again. When he was reincarnated for the sixth time, he is born into the modern world. Being born into the world, the new world, may I add, changes Jung Wu's goal as there is no Murim in the modern world. Yet he continues training in order to defeat Shin Ryong. Ultimately, he prioritizes the goal of becoming stronger to defeat Shin Ryong, while trying to adapt to his modern world where he has a family. And of course, he goes to school like a normal person. Number 7. Daddy from Hell Overall, the plot is engaging and interesting, and the concept is pretty cool. Xu Feng was a murderer. When he was on a mission, he failed and was hunted to a corner, so he jumped down a cliff. After his death, he entered the underworld. He spent 500 years and became the most powerful in the world. Well, the underworld, may I add. But for him, it's the world. The demon called Demon King. 500 years in the underworld, his only desire is to return to Earth and meet his lover, and manages to destroy the Pearl of Death in order to return to Earth. But on Earth, it turns out that there is a little girl who has been waiting for him. Who might that be? Overall, it's a pretty great read, so you gotta like, you know, you gotta give it a try. Number 6. I'm an evil god. 
The story of Chai Yan, a ridiculously handsome man who fell into the hands of a sexy woman lusting over his body upon transfiguration. To avoid dying from dual cultivation, he traveled to countless worlds. I've dipped into the modern world and I've dipped into the good amount of mangas to know where this cultivation and the world is a martial arts playground where the main character rules. But I must say that this really didn't disappoint me. It has a wonderful story that danced around with teleportation and origin points, which is original, and the characters that sort of fall into place. The fact that the main character can go to the other realms and help them out certainly caught my eye, and the different stories it gives makes you laugh and cry. If the art was a bit better, this would certainly be a top-notch manga. This manga is really a hidden gem among other cultivation plots related manga. Check it out. Number 5. Worn and Torn Newbie This is not bad at all, I mean you guys have seen this one on the list before. You can expect the art to be good. It's return to the past kinda, you know, plot, but it's different in its own way. There's no being stuck in a game world and the plot is interesting enough to keep readers interested and hooked. It's fun seeing him trash people and getting all the good stuff. So yeah, not an incredible story, but a good one. The manga at the beginning looks like your typical Eskai manga where the main character plays a ruined MMORPG game after losing his sword he gets reborn to 15 years in the past, where with his knowledge from the past, his life becomes the strongest and the tricky players to ever play this game. The storyline is pretty good, it could be better in some parts, that could be fixed of course, but that's alright. The characters and art are like, I mean, how do I rate this? Uh, 10 out of 10, 10, 10, probably somewhere in the 7. I mean, it's quite likable, so it's got that. And the conclusion, it is quite interesting, so you might want to give this a try to know what happens. Number 4. The hero who seeks revenge shall exterminate with darkness. Rawl, who had defeated the Demon King as the strongest hero, should have become the savior of the world. Having his treasured companions and family killed by power-hungry aristocrats, he was executed with false charges brought against him by the princess. Just before his life collapsed at last, his heart fell into darkness. I will tear those traitors from limb to limb, burn them at the stake. Sever them to pieces, skewer them, I will kill every one of those bastards without mercy and make them taste hell. Obtaining the power of darkness, Raul was revived, sneering the wild revenge. Ooh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll bask in their blood to my heart's content. Several days after the hero's revival in the imperial capital, where flowers bloomed in profusion, the parade that would advance towards tragedy began. I hope it gets an anime adaptation, man, it's so good. Number 3. The Eminence in Shadow The concept is unique and the story is exciting and the Shadow Brokers are those who go unnoticed, posing as remarkable people when in truth they control everything from behind the scenes. CID wants to be someone just like more than anything else, but something as insignificant as boring reality isn't going to get his way. He trains in secret every single night, preparing for his eventual rise to power, only to be denied his destiny by a run-of-the-mill yet deadly traffic accident. When he wakes up in another world and suddenly finds himself at the head of an actual secret organization doing battle with evil in the shadows, he'll finally get a chance to act out all of his delusional fantasies. This manga combines an intriguing story, worked out characters and a very nice base idea into an amazing story. It perfectly balances comedy and action aspects into each other. The typical OPMC tries to hide its power and is also reworked into something that I haven't really seen before. You gotta give it a try, folks. I re I mean, I <sighs> do I recommend it though? Mm -hmm, let me think. Mm. Alright, fine, I recommend it. It's fine. Number 2 Rooftop Swordmaster. This manga is so cool. If you didn't like, you know, read this one, you're missing out on one of the best hidden gems out there. This is the revenge plot kind of thing, you know, for the badass MC. Don't let the first few chapters fool you. It is very satisfying to read and the hype is real. If you're looking for a revenge story with a good art style, then it's a must read. The MC is purely revenge driven. After being beat up and put into a coma by eight of his classmates at Neon Kwang Middle School, Si Young woke up after nine long months and found out that his father committed suicide by self immolation in an attempt to get justice for what had happened to him. As a result, the investigation reopened and that attackers who tried to sweep it under the rug received a proper sentence for their crimes. 
But Se Young was unable to assuage the anger and fear he felt for the unjust world. If you want some OP revenge manga, then it's a must read. Number 1 Magic Emperor This is one of the best mangas that I've ever read. The story itself uses any main character you can think of and the story would be amazing. The world building, the side characters, the power system, it will add up to a great story. But then, add this particular main character as a protagonist? Oh my goodness. He makes the story a hundred times better. His personality fits the manga perfectly. The art is also amazing. This one is really great. I love the fact that the MC is completely ruthless and if anyone tries to stop him, he will get rid of him without considering anything else. The art fits well, I mean it really does, it does fit well with the story. It's an awesome manga worth the time for you to take out and then give it a read. That's all for today folks, hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please do give it a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more Top 10. Stay safe and take care. My name is Zida Khan and I am the voice of the voiceless. See you next time!